Red Sox are back home at Fenway Park tonight facing the Tampa Bay Rays to kick off the weekend with a lead growing to ten and a half games over the New York Yankees inside the division. It's game one of a seven game homestand with a slight delay at the very top. Hi everybody I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. My partner is the Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley and Jemai Webster right around the corner as well. Yeah we're going to start in about a ten minute delay because of rain showers that are beginning to quickly clear up. The Red Sox getting a little bit healthier and Ian Kinsler returns to the lineup. Eduardo Rodriguez not far behind him. He's about to go out on rehab as well. So the Red Sox act as good as they are which is the best team in Major League Baseball are actually getting stronger and healthier. I think it's a perfect move when they made it. I, it wasn't really in the in the in the, the vibe but he came and, and Kinsel was perfect. You talk about a veteran guy that's been around a long time. He's won everywhere he's gone. That's a guy that can run a little bit. He's got some power we've seen over the course of his career and he can play defense. We saw that right away in a couple of games against the Yankees but all of a sudden he went on the DL and poof he was gone and so it's nice to have him be able to come back like this and he can move uh, uh, Nunez over to third base and now that Devers is on the DL for the next 10 days but uh, it makes them better if the Red Sox can be better Kinsler's makes them better can run too. yes you know can also steal your base a lot of things the Red Sox love to do now facing a Tampa Bay team that has surprised a lot of people there are a few games over 500 their pitching staff is actually very very tough the number four in ERA in the American League and they do it this way where they pitch the these openers like tonight in the opener of the series in fact where they start a relief pitcher Stanek tonight likely only to go an inning maybe a little more than that he's done this 19 times and what has he got a little over 40 innings you know he go he just doesn't even go two innings he may just go one this guy brings it to about 98 miles an hour and this is something that they've done and they've had success with it they've had look at since May 19th what they've done you know it, it, this is a team that's really can't really hang with the big boys but they've done it they've done it with you know mediocre offense but a pitching staff really with no starting pitching this is all about relievers and they just ding and dong you you know inning here inning there middle relief and uh, then they just get rid of uh, you know Archer I mean mm -hmm. their best starting pitcher and then see where they're going to go from here but it's amazing that they are what three games over 500 to begin with I mean that's how they are it's a small market team they got to do what they got to do and this is what they've been doing You're right a lot of it's driven by economics and, and who the Tampa Bay Rays are but they can be very tough now the Red Sox are nine and four against them although a lot of those decisions were very close one and two run affairs Red Sox taking on the Rays here in the first of the three game series Ian Kinsler back in the lineup tonight Brian Johnson is on the mound this evening the left hander gets the start he's been a very valuable guy join us for game one coming up in just a moment.
Alex Smith, he can run. He will lead things off. He's in right field. Matt Duffy at third base. Tommy Pham in left field. C.J. Crone at first. Joey Wendell at second base. Gomez the D.H. with Kiermaier in center field. Ademis is the shortstop and Perez is doing the catching and batting ninth against Johnson. Left hander three wins three losses coming in getting the start on a Friday night. Red Sox and the Friday night Reds. Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. The Red Sox have made 58 airs on the season in 122 games around the infield. Nunez tonight at third. Bogarts at short. Ian Kinsler second. Mitch Moreland at first. Out in the outfield. Andrew Benintendi in left. Jackie Bradley Jr. in center. Mookie Betts in right. Behind the plate tonight, Blake Swihart catching Brian Johnson. The umpires tonight are brought to you by Toyota's website for deals by Toyota.com. Chad Whitson has the plate. Wegner, Tumpane, and Reynolds on the bases. Wegner is the crew chief. And we're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. SAP presented by Toyota. Visit Copper2Toyota.com to see Toyota deals not seen on TV. And the weather has vastly improved. It really rained hard here with thunder and lightning. We got the whole show about an hour and a half ago, but right now 76 degrees, chance of some storms in the area. Right now, though, very pleasant. And it's cooled off considerably with those showers. And we're set for the first pitch tonight. Malik Smith in the box. And his ball one and we're underway. Boy, Malik Smith, he's had a nice year for them, almost hitting 300, you see there. He can run a little bit. He's got, what, 26 bags on the season? He's also been caught nine times. And he's got himself a base hit. Picking on the second pitch of the night. Single through the right side, and he is on, and as Eck mentioned, 26 thefts. This is just a very pesky team. They don't go the long ball like. Remember last year they hit, they led the league, come top of the league in long balls. Not this year at all. This guy's done a really nice job. Kevin Cash, the manager, former Red Sox catcher. He's oh. in the conversation for manager of the year. That says everything. How he orchestrates this bullpen is beyond me. Here's Matt Duffy, another guy having a good year. They're going to keep Smith close. Blake Swihart find a play tonight. Duffy, 297. Good contact, man. Red Got Sox it. coming home with the best record in Major League Baseball at 86 and 36. Even yesterday, gaining ground on the Yankees, who lost. To this Tampa Bay club, and now the lead is the biggest it's been all season. Tampa Bay gave them trouble, won two out of three. The first time in four years that the Rays have gone to Yankee Stadium and won a series. They won that game three three to one. They had the bases loaded, the Yankees nobody out in the bottom of the ninth, and they got out of it. Yeah, Duffy is one of those guys who's been something of a pain in the neck against the Red Sox this year as you can see hitting over 300. And the 0 2. Ground ball might be two. Kinsler the Bogarts one on the first double play. Johnson cleans up that base hit very quickly two gone. That is a beautiful thing especially with a guy that can run on first base. Taylor made double play just shoves it over there to Bogarts and he does his thing. Nice way to start this game. Now will send up the left fielder Tommy Pham. Which is P.H.A.M. 248 with a little bit of power he's hit 14 home runs. Just came off the D.L. yesterday after healing up from a fractured foot. Boy, he blossomed late with the Cardinals and really showed a lot last couple of years, and then they got rid of him. Kind of a surprise, really. When he hits it, he tends to hit it very hard. Count goes to three and nothing. Toronto already out in front of the Yankees in the first inning, two to nothing. Automatic in there for a strike. Now 
gets him working very quickly but he'll walk him. So fam is aboard and CJ Crone will be next. Brian's last effort in Baltimore was out of the bullpen. He went one inning of relief. The start before that was against Toronto. He pitched better than the final line. He went seven, giving up five runs. There's a shot driven down the left field line, hit it for the wall. And that's going to catch the green, a fair ball. Fam rounding third. He's going to try and score. And now he's hitting back to third base, a wise choice. In the second base, Crone. He stops with a double. I thought they were going to send him with two, you know, two outs right here. I thought they might go, but Ben Intendi got it back. I mean, this is a big play by him. This ball is barely fair. Kind of must have got in on Crone because he can hit it a long ways. Ball comes straight down. He's glad this ball's not out of the ballpark, to tell you the truth, but it stays in. Fam can run pretty good, and he holds him up right there. Ball coming into bogey, he would have been a dead duck. Made the right call there. However, second and third for Wendell. As he'll look at a strike, a 293 hitter. He's hit six home runs. So Tampa Bay trying to strike right away against Johnson. And a pretty good hitter at the plate. Good pitch. Set up these breaking balls he wants to throw away from him. Wendell's been one of their really hot hitters since the beginning of July. He's hitting 356. And he ropes that one into right field for a base hit. That's going to score two runs. Fam is in. Crone right behind him. And then the second base with a walk in double is the red hot Joey Wendell to make it two to nothing. Boy, these Tampa Bay Rays, what on earth is going on here? He hung a breaking ball. I don't think that was one of his best. Threw him a fastball in, and you see this breaking ball just doesn't sweep all the way, leaves it there, and he just hooks this ball down the line. Didn't even really follow through with that swing. Kind of a three quarter swing, but beautifully placed down the line, double two RBIs. So Wendell stays hot. Now the slumping Carlos Gomez hitting just 215. 0 for 2 lifetime against Johnson. He loves to come out of his shoes. He's not afraid to let it go. So a rough start for Johnson. Three hits, two doubles, a walk. With a double play in the middle. And a 1 1. Johnson has had trouble in the first inning before. We saw against the Yankees. He gave up three early. He got in trouble somewhere else. He had the bases loaded, got out of it. So once he gets it going, he'll be all right. Got to get out of this. Runner goes, and that one roped into left field. That'll bring in another run. Wendell around the score. Gomez takes the turn at first. He's got an RBI hit, and just like that, three to nothing, Tampa Bay. Well, they just punched us in the mouth right there. Another breaking ball just sitting there. They know he's got this breaking ball. Everybody's looking breaking ball. He gets it. It's not the biter. It just stays right there, and he ropes it into left field. The runner running on the play. <laughs> Wendell scores on that three nothing right away. That did not take long. So the Red Sox quickly in a hole here tonight. Johnson will face at least seven rays in the first inning. And Kiermaier will be the next man up center fielder. He's had a tough year hitting just 177. That's the fourth lowest batting average in the major leagues. He's been hurt a lot in his career too. Runner goes and it's popped up on the infield. Here comes Andrew Bogarts along with Nunez. Nunez will take it. Looks like they want to run to it. Oh yeah. And they run off three quick runs to make it three to nothing before the Red Sox come up to bat.
Tampa Bay right out of the gate striking for three runs in the first inning. So here come the Red Sox Betts Benintendi Moreland against the relief pitcher Ryan Stanek one and three two forty five ERA. He can really bring it too. First fastball at ninety eight. There's some funny stats right there aren't they huh. 40 starts nine excuse me 40 games 19 starts and look at the innings only 48 innings. It's wild. Mookie hitting 352 with 27 home runs. It's like a closer is starting this game. He's got the velocity of a lot of closers. Oh yeah. One of the harder throwers in all of Major League Baseball. 2 0. Well, the Red Sox are a very, very good fastball hitting team. I tell you what, they'd rather have him pitch the first inning because control is not his his thing. He, he he throws so hard and you know late in the ball game control is everything so he can get away with a walk early. Mookie is hit safely in 10 straight games. Here's the 3 0 pitch. Taking all the way. Over the 10 game hitting streak he's batting 459. He had a really nice road trip too. I don't think he's ever been cold to be honest with you. Not too often. Three one. Woo. And a full count. Mookie has been stuck at ninety nine runs scored for a while. Yeah he has no days rest look at that two two thirds of an inning last night. <laughs> it's the Yankees 3 2 coming. Popped him up. And a left center field. And it'll be Kiermaier to make the play. Red Sox lineup brought to you by Toyota's website for deals via Toyota.com. Ben Intendi will be next, then Mitch Moreland at first. JD Martinez, the DH this evening. Xander Bogart's at Jordy and Kinsler back in there at second base off the DL. Nunez at third, Swihart catching, and Jackie Bradley's in center. Number nine hitter against Stanek, who's done well in this opener role, opening up the ball game as a starter. Then he will give way to the bullpen very quickly. Benintendi, 298, 15 home runs for Andrew. Red Sox leading the series against Tampa Bay nine to four. Wow. Wow. Historic Red Sox season beginning at Tropicana Field. That slider was nasty straight down. I thought it was a splitter. Well, he's been tough on lefties hasn't yes, he? Hasn't he? And Stanek with a one one. Benintendi had kind of a chilly series against the Phillies. He went one for eight. They're a tough opponent. It's a good pitching team. It is. Maybe postseason ready this year. 2 1, roped into right field, sinking and down for a base hit. Andrew Benintendi with a nice start tonight with a solid single to right. Yeah, let's take a look at the Rays defense tonight. They've made 71 errors in 121 games. You see Duffy at third. Willie Adamas at short, Joey Wendell at second, CJ Cron at first. Out in the outfield, Tommy Fan left, Kevin Kiermaier in center, Malik Smith in right behind the plate, Michael Perez catching Ryan Stanek. So, Sox with their first base runner down three to nothing. Mitch Marlin will be next. In Philadelphia, last game at a three run double. Otherwise on the trip kind of chilly five out of thirty two although he did wind up driving in ten runs. Red Sox going seven and two on the trip. Alex Cora was really happy with that. As at times it was a difficult trip. Getting into Toronto at six o'clock in the morning to start it after the four game sweep of the Yankees. 
you know taking four from Baltimore I know they're lambs but it's hard to get it done that big game was on was it Thursday night right 19 to 12 what a game huh at one point it was eight to three and the double header and the double header it's easier said than done that was Friday I'm talking about the 1912 but you know, win that double header it's not easy to win double header I don't care how bad a team is. And going on to Philly against a good young club there and splitting those two games. Here's the 1 1 from Stanick. Got the corner. J.D. Martinez on deck, the DH this evening. JD is still leading the majors with 37 home runs. And a dive back by Ben Intendi. 20 stolen bases for him. Great chance to reach 30. Mookie Betts has 24. Mookie looks like a lock to be a 30 30 man. One and two on Moreland. Oh, he's leaning. Oh, he was leaning. Check this little flinch. Whoa. Big guy takes a long time to deliver it. That's why he's thinking about going. One out, one on. Runner holding and it bounces away from the catcher Perez all the way to the backstop and Tendi taking the turn at second base on a wild pitch. That's what happens when you slide step you hurry up and throw it and shove it in the ground because that's what he did. You know base runners bother pitchers they just do. Fast base runners they get in your head. Yes they did look at that little slide step. He's not going, but that ball, as soon as it hit the ground, he's gone. Man, that ball was like, I don't know how many, 56 feet. Not a stolen base, but maybe yeah. he should get credit for half a one. <laughs> it's a big league wild pitch. Yeah, sure was. 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball center field. Kiermaier driven back. Lining it up now to the warning track. He's got it. Ben Intendi will tag and advance into third on the long fly out. So two gone. Yeah, tomorrow at 6.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live, presented by DCU. TC Wake and Steve will preview tomorrow's pitching matchup between Tyler Glasnow and David Price. DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union, what can DCU save you? J.D. Martinez hitting 333, 37 homers, 104 RBI. He has 11 more runs batted in than anybody else in the major leagues. Trying to pick up 105 right now and Ben Intendi at third. And ball one. But the Red Sox all season long when they get down by whatever margin it is, particularly early in the game, you don't sense any trace of panic whatsoever. Well, they, you know, it's not like they're all trying to make catch up real quick. I mean, there's just a a lengthy a lengthy lineup is what it is. Just keep coming. And Martinez looking to take advantage and get one back. 368 with runners in scoring position. Xander Bogart's on deck. There are two gone. Good swing. 99 miles an hour, too. Well, he's not saving it, that's for sure. This is it, right? There's no reason to. <laughs> that's you know. the thing about going one inning. You just air it out. Ryan Stanick, named after the Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg, despite being born into a Family of Cardinal fans, from what we're told. It was badly there, three and one. 
If this guy was closing for me, I'd be worried. You know, he, he misfires a lot. His average fastball velocity, though, is 97.9. His max velocity, 100.5. That was on May 26th against Baltimore. Tried to hold up, but he went. Got a slider there at 91, and it's 3 and 2. Boy, he sold out on a fastball. Why not? And he throws that slider so hard it gets about 90% of the way and then takes a little left turn. Another one. Fenway Faithful would like a run in here. Here comes the 3 2. He bounced it for ball four. So he walks Martinez. He'll be on at first and third for Xander Bogarts. Enjoy the final weekend of summer baseball at Fenway Park here Saturday and Sunday for tickets and great offers visit redsoxcom slash tickets. Then they got Chirinos up in the bullpen. I mean, it's like they're managing the first inning like it's the middle of a game right this is almost like they're managing this like the sixth or seventh inning right. They're managing the first. the first inning like Gabe Kapler managed the entire game in oh, Philadelphia so the other right. day. It was I mean, the World Series. It was the seventh game. Seventh game. It was coming down to those oh. seven, eight relief pitchers, however many he used. I think it was seven. He kept one guy on the bench. That was the catcher, right? Yep. yep. Used everybody else. So first and third for Xander, 275, 17 homers. And he has really enjoyed facing Tampa Bay this season. Remember the start he got off to and so many early games against the Rays and he just ate them alive. We'll see if that continues here in August. He was two bagger bogey right he got nine doubles off of them. He did. In 12 games. And missed badly. Our key matchup presented by Sullivan Tire and Complete Auto Service. Always here to get you there. So there it is, 378 against Tampa Bay this season. Nine doubles, two homers. He's driven in 12. I mean, really. Damage. Woo. 98 at the top of the zone for a strike. Last season, Stanek averaged 98.1 on his fastball. He had 14 pitches of 100 miles an hour or more. He was their hardest thrower. Two and one. Cash directing some defensive traffic. With Benintendi at third and Martinez at first, three to nothing, Tampa Bay first inning. And he popped that one foul out of play. They got a pitch to hit, but it was 99. Yeah, that ball's hot upstairs. It's hard to get on top of that. Kinsler would bat next. Just a little too tall. Just. See the top of the strike zone here. That's hot though, 99. My goodness. That's hair, like the back of his head. <laughs> Got a lot of that. This will be his 26th pitch in the first inning. Most of them fastballs. 2 2. Spoil that one. Xander number two on the ball club in RBI. Kind of quietly those RBIs I yeah, think. I would say so 72 of them. Two two. Popped up foul again. That'll curve back out of play. The 
we talked about this last couple of weeks where Bogarts has really done damages with runners in scoring position. It's not just a base hit. He has 22 extra base hits which leads the world right. Yeah it's number one in the majors. Trying to go to town here. Mm, that will miss away. Good take there and a slider. And a full count. Not very many sliders. This ball just misses on the outside corner. Good take. After all those fastballs. Got to be thinking of fastball here, right? Oh, yeah. This crowd's into it right away on this Friday night. Here's the payoff pitch. Fly ball left center field. That one headed toward the wall. Kiermaier, long, long run. He can't get it. It's out of the warning track. One run is in. Here comes another run. Martinez scores. Bogarts off to third. They're not going to get it. Yeah, Bogey makes him pay is what he does. 3-2 pitch. This action. And you just got off talking about extra base hits with runners in scoring position. He gets a high fastball outside and high. Looks like he you know, one handed that ball and it went a long ways. Look at this. I thought this was a can of corn when he hit it. But Giermeyer was playing him a little right center. I thought he had a beat on it and it beat him. Ball's by him. I think it fooled him. I really do. And he gets a triple on this thing. Two RBIs. Beautiful. 73 and 74 for the X man his third triple and the Red Sox suddenly have the tying run at third base for Ian Kinsler who has returned to the lineup after stay on the DL to hamstring injury Raphael Devers returning to the DL to make room for him with the recurrence of his hamstring issues. What a big answer right there you know I tell you get down three nothing. 3 2 pitch. Kiermeyer catches that ball. That was would have been huge. Kinsler thinking about Lansdowne Street with that swing. Well, he's got that uppercut, that's for sure. He's done well in three games with the Red Sox since his return to the lineup or uh, since coming over from the Angels. He is four for ten. There's the roster move. That's a second draw. I mean, DL that Devers has been on. All star break, and then now. 1 1 ground ball to third, picked off by Duffy. And that'll retire the side, but the Red Sox fight right back and get two. 3 2 Tampa Bay after one.
Second inning, 3 2 Tampa Bay back at Fenway. Red Sox first to seven back home at the Fens. Willie Adama's shortstop leading things off. Xander Bogarts with a two run triple moments ago, and the Red Sox get right back in it. Never takes very long. Johnson in need of a very quiet second inning because in the first inning he gave up three runs on four hits and they really charged him. A couple breaking balls that he kind of hung. But he's in a hurry, isn't he? Boy, he can get it and throw it. Pretty obvious in the first inning that Tampa Bay intends to run tonight whenever they get a chance. High chop on the infield. Short hop staff to spin. Nunez skips it. Got him. Oh. Dug out by Marlin to nip him at first base. Very close play at the bag. In fact, Adamas is not leaving first. I didn't think he was going to make this pick. That is a great pick. It's behind him. 360 turn. He just shoves it in the ground just to get it there. Put someone on it and a little pick there by, I don't know. I don't know. This looks closer than I thought originally. Oh, I thought he got him. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's coming off the bag. He's out. Yeah, I didn't really think it was that close. Yeah, your eyes are better than mine. <laughs> nice pick there by Nunez. Very nice. I, I, it's a great pick, and he had to hurry up and just throw it. It's almost like he played it like AstroTurf, just fired over there, one hop it. Smart play. And there's Michael Perez, catcher, 302 and one home run. He's appeared in just 14 games. All but one as a starting catcher, Malik Smith on deck. Perez sort of just came out of nowhere from Arizona. He's way down on their, their depth chart at, at catcher with Arizona. That's why no one's heard of him. Yeah, didn't make his major league debut until July 26. Known to be a very good defensive catcher. And a one two. Fenway packed on this Friday night. Two two high fly ball. He got under that one into right field. Mookie Betts has plenty of space for the second out. Let's get down to Jamai. Well, Dave, you and Eck were just talking about how Alex Cora has been complimentary of Brian Johnson, calling him the under-the-radar MVP of the team. And it's because Johnson has given them an opportunity to win on a daily basis, Cora says. He says he's not just in there to cover innings. He's actually in there to get people out, and that's what he does. Told Johnson the high praise he got from his manager, and he was pretty much speechless. But he said he relishes this hybrid role, whether he's starting or whether he's coming out of the pen. He says when you put winning above all else, it comes secondary. It's this start that he says he was hoping to just rely on his strengths. Had an uphill climb early, but now his team has given him an opportunity just chasing one run. Yep, very quickly getting back into it with the two, thanks to Xander Bogarts and an eight starts over his last eight. Johnson's three and one, a 321 ERA. And you know, as a starter, you don't have to be perfect. With this offense. Well, some of the games he won, you know, against the Yankees, gave up five runs. The game, last game against Toronto, where he started, he gave up five runs, whatever it was. A home run in the seventh inning, though. He looked good. So you can't get, you know, you give up three in the first, you know, don't don't fret over it. I mean, it happened the last two games. Malik Smith base hit in the first inning. In there for a strike, he checked. And a count three and two. So Johnson's on the verge of a one, two, three inning. She could really use after a rough first. Matt Duffy on deck. And he puts him away with a swing and a miss. And they go one, two, three. He needed that.
Well, heading on to the bottom half of the second inning, Red Sox are down three to two to Tampa Bay. And Chirinos will now come out of the bullpen on in relief of Stanek. Who went what we expected, one inning, and he gave up two runs, two hits. He allowed the two run triple to Xander Bogart. So Chirinos with a 350 ERA, a one and four record, will take over now. Yeah, you see the seven starts there, and there's been several times he's gone five innings out of the bullpen. Eduardo Nunez just turned into terrific defensive play. And not to say it wasn't a close play at first base, just wasn't close enough to be reviewed. And there was no challenge by Tampa Bay, but a marvelous effort. That was a tough pick, is what it was. Sure was, and a short hop. Floater down the line, Smith giving chase, runs. Ooh. Oh, he goes slamming into the wall. He paid the price, he hangs on. What a play. No, he took a shot, too. He left his feet and then the next time he felt anything it was the wall. Watch this he goes up times it. Well he. Oof. God he just sort of ran into it before he caught it. I thought he was going to slow down and he just kept going boom. It's a great play. Got nothing to work with. To have the concentration to make the catch and knowing you're going to take a hit. He caught that ball in fair territory. Yes, he did. And it looked like the ribs for the brunt. Cash, the manager, going all the way out there to right field along with the trainer to see if he can continue. There's where the steps ran out. It's easy to get a little short arm right there. Now you get close to that wall to stay with it and make the catch. I mean, that that's, was that's pretty. an impressive play. Absolutely. As you know, you're going to take a wallop. Oh, yeah. He's going to hang in there. And man, no Fenway being Fenway gets a very classy cheer. This ball is slicing away from Smith is what it was doing, you know, and he he catches it, then leaves his feet and sh puts his knee up, gets him on the side. And Malik Smith, one of the better catches all season long at Fenway. So that'll bring up Blake Swihart, 226 with a home run. He gets the catch tonight. Those ribs are going to be tender for a while. He took some hit. Blake activated from the DL on Tuesday. It's a high twisting fly to left field fan getting under back and up to the track and makes the play. So that'll be two up and two down for Jackie Bradley. Tickets are still available for the Red Sox Foundation annual picnic in the park on Sunday. Join the 2018 Red Sox team and the Red Sox Foundation on the field for a celebration after the game. Visit RedSoxFoundation.org slash events for more info. Jackie 218 11 home runs coming off a fine trip. So I'm driving six. Last five games hitting 444. He's had OPS coming up almost to 700. That's out of. He's been working on that for a while. Yeah, and a base hit the other way. So he is on and with Jackie 12 stolen bases. So the Sox with their third hit of the game back up to the top of the go to non Mookie Betts. Who has a 10 game hitting streak. And number one in home batting average in the majors 377 at Fenway Park. And Chirinos with two down. Torinos has some run on that fastball. He doesn't take too long to deliver it. Two gone and the 0 1. And a pop up off first base. Crone looking for room near the Red Sox dugout and can't get to it. Oh. 
ran out of room. That is an out just sitting there about a foot away. If you're a pitcher, you're saying, I got to have that. This ballpark will kill you. I mean, this is routine pop up just out of the reach. You get another shot. Mookie gets another shot. He can make you pay. You go diving in there. This guy's got four seam, two seam, and then it's slider. Benintendi on deck. And one, two. You mentioned a fine crowd here on a Friday night. Red Sox have sold out. 28 times, including the last 21 in a row. As this historic season has built and built and built. Here comes the 2 2. And a dive back in by Jackie Bradley. Red Sox do have the highest winning percentage at home. About 74 percent. Bradley loves to pick his spots. Not running here, and that is inside for a ball. So, Buki Betts is running full. Now one more run Mookie would join Ted Williams as the only Red Sox ever to record three 100 run seasons before they got to age 26. There goes Jackie Bradley swung on and missed he got him side retired one man left. Top of the third, Brian Johnson right back at it. Had a very good second inning. One, two, three. Taking on Duffy, Pham, and Crone. In the third, three, two Rays. Duffy hit into a four, six, three double play first time up. Good spot for that curveball. Perfect. Laced but foul. Duffy, one of those guys who's been skidding for Tampa Bay as of late. 
Only hitting 215 his last 21 games, so he's been in a slump coming in. But they are a surprising 62 and 59. Say surprising given all the offensive guys they lost from last year's team, which was a real home run yeah. hitting team. We can go on and on about that list that they lost. Starting with Longoria, who'd been there forever. Yep, when well they traded. Fly ball, lofted into center field, very playable. Jackie Bradley back it up. That'll be on number one here in the third. Red Sox season ticket plans for 2019 will be going on sale now. New plans will include access to potential 2018 postseason games. For more information, go to RedSox.com slash season tickets. Bam took a walk and scored a run in the first inning when they got three quick ones against Johnson. Red Sox Ooh. came bouncing back to get two. And a 1 0 Ooh. dropped in there at 75 with a curveball. Well, Johnson is getting it and he is throwing it. Almost like he's in a contest with Chris Sale. Who can deliver it quicker? You're not going to see anybody too much quicker. Chris Sale, by the way, to go on Sunday afternoon against Tampa Bay. Here's the 2 1. And fouls it away full count. Chris Sale by the way his last seven starts he is six and oh an ERA of zero point two zero. <laughs> That's beyond silly. That is silly yeah, huh? stuff. Yeah. Silly. One run in 44 innings. Shot out to left center Jackie Bradley be tested on this one. Leaps up and he makes the play and he thugs into the 379 mark. He got some break on that ball and he stole an extra base hit from Tommy Pham. That was an absolute bullet. I thought this ball was going to take off and he got it before it took off. You should have seen where this ball was hit. He was gone. A beeline right there. A little leap and he makes the play and you haven't got much room around there. We've seen this before where he catches it and slides into the wall. But he knew where he was. He's gone. He was gone and he went to get it and got it. He's fun to watch. So graceful. Really. Beautiful leaping catch there. It's one of those bullets I thought was really going to take off. It did take off. <laughs> this may be a golden year for Jackie Bradley. Throwing the batter, rips that one foul. He doubled and scored in the first inning. I mean, we've got a bird's eye view of the whole thing. When that ball was hit, I saw the whole thing is beautiful. Is he going to catch this thing? What a break on that yes. ball. Instantaneous. Looks easy from here. Doesn't <laughs> it? Go get it, Jackie. It looks artistic from here. Yeah. Two and one. Look at this thing, huh? Watch him. Watch him as soon as it's hit. Boom. Gone. Gets it. He hasn't got much time now. Popped up and playable. Swihart with the mask off there. And they're going to go in order. Another good inning for Brian Johnson with a big time helping hand.
first pitch presented by Joseph Abood. Available at Men's Warehouse, T.C. Wake and Steve will break down Brian Johnson's start. Bottom of the third inning, 3-2 Tampa Bay. Ben and Tendy leading things off here. Delighted to welcome back to the booth Alex Spear of the Boston Globe. And just moments ago, you were witnessing another Jackie Bradley sensational catch in center field. And two of the very best in the game are patrolling center field tonight. Kiermaier for Tampa Bay. Who do you think's better? Who's going to win the gold glove this year? People always ask, why hasn't Jackie Bradley Jr. won a gold glove? The answer is in center field for the Rays with Kiermaier, who's been so, so good since breaking into the big leagues. Bill James, actually, at one point, you know, the Red Sox senior analyst. Liner to left field that hangs up for Pham, one away. Had an observation that he thinks that this, it's, it's entirely possible that the American League East, uh, this was maybe a year or two ago, might have the best center field defense that any division has ever had. When you think about Bradley, Kiermaier, Pilar, you know, in, in terms of this year, the fact that Kiermaier has been a little bit banged up, I, I feel like the prominence of Jackie Bradley Jr. Uh, has been greater with some of the catches that he's been making. There's been more national conversation, and Eck, you would probably be able to, uh, to weigh in on that, but there's more national recognition of him, and yet, the defensive metrics for him don't match up with those that Kiermaier typically has, which is partly a function of where they play. Bradley has a smaller center field to patrol. Kiermaier has an enormous one in Tampa Bay, so things end up looking a little bit different. You think because of we, you know, because of the the Red Sox and their everybody sees the Red Sox. I know everybody's seen on the you know, Major League Baseball. You know, everybody's got their their tunes. You know people watching but you know the Red Sox more than anybody you would think so and but some of what Bradley does so brilliantly isn't necessarily a diving play right that one anyone can recognize but sometimes it's just the fact that he got himself in position to make a routine catch that you know when when he makes plays look easy he had all those double plays in his first year in his first couple of years because he was catching balls that no one thought he could get to and he was catching them on his feet it's interesting you say that the ballpark can work against him I would have thought the metrics would would serve him better in a ballpark like this because I'd say it's a tougher ballpark. You've got 420 that angle out there. You've got all different levels and different types of surfaces here. You don't have that in Tampa Bay. That's not to say that Kermar's not a great outfielder. He is. Does it on the road too. I, I get that. He's won two gold gloves. But this is a very difficult ballpark for an outfielder up the middle. Wendell will stab that long throw to set down Moreland. So it's always part of the rub when you're talking about defensive metrics isn't it. Yeah and sometimes the ballpark difficulty particularly the positioning of the walls and what rattles off of it isn't really factored into the defensive analytics that we're talking about. Those are mostly based on just the amount of square footage that's out there. Ground covered. Exactly. Sort of exactly. Right. And so Bradley doesn't have the opportunity to make some great plays back over his head because the center field wall straight away is, you know, probably a couple dozen feet closer than it is in Tampa Bay. Right. We remember the play that Kiermaier made on opening day to Rob Mookie on the first pitch oh, of the season. Yeah. Brilliant. That ball's way gone here. Yeah. yeah. J.D. Martinez is a walk and a run first time up. But, you know, think of it over Jackie said you've got a shorter center field wall than 37 feet just a few feet off to the side and you've got the padded wall in center and if it doesn't hit that it might hit a screen or it might hit a garage door. I mean I think that makes it a tougher outfield. No doubt and I just think that the that defensive analytics as they are currently used right which are largely driven on square footage are flawed. Yeah I fly into right field Smith will get under this. How about having a gun like he has too? does that <laughs> go into it. It does. You, yeah, it's got to go into it, right? We'll talk about it next time. Yes. Sounds good. All right, one, two, three inning. Our thanks to Alex, and the score remains three to two, Tampa Bay.
Top of the fourth, Wendell in the box. It's that one sharply, but a friendly bouncer to Kinsler. One pitch, one out. Wendell had doubled in a couple in the first inning. Time now for our social drive brought to you by Ram Trucks built to serve. Here's Casey. This November, the Notre Dame football team will face off against Syracuse at Yankee Stadium. It's part of the ongoing Shamrock series. You know it. It takes the Irish everywhere from San Antonio to Fenway Park over the past few years. Well, they're getting a little carried away this year. The whole uniform will be Yankees themed from the helmets to the lettering across the front of the jerseys. Crazy. That's your Ram social drive. As you will win that by three touchdowns. <laughs> Carlos Gomez going after the first pitch files it away in an RBI single in the first inning. He's the DH tonight. 3 2 Tampa Bay here in the fourth. Gomez, every time he swings the bat, he looks like he's going to hit it 400 feet, but he's only hit one home run. In his last 53 games. That does not keep him from swinging for the fences on every cut. He could style now. He's one of the. He's got a big league trot. And down he goes on strikes. He went chasing. Two up, two down. Amica Insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto home and life insurance. You see the high fastball there. He's seen some curveballs down. You see a couple of pitches and that fastball plays big upstairs. Kevin Kiermaier 0 for 1 with a pop up to third as he looks at a strike. Well, Alex Spear was talking about this, talking about Kiermaier's defensive prowess, and since 2015, he leads the majors with 96 defensive runs saved. That's at all positions. And the man that Jackie Bradley will have to beat out. And a ground ball to Kinsler, routine play up and over, and Johnson's on a roll. He has set down 10 straight. England Chevy dealers and the Chevy Silverado. 
Two on two out three two pits to Bradley excuse me to Bogarts and he gets a high fastball drives it over the head of Kiermaier that's hard to do two runs come in make it a three two game big hit. So 74 RBI now for Xander very real chance at 100. Moving the rest of tonight 40 games remaining. Kinsler on deck then Nunez. Shot to left center field. That one ticketed for the wall. Off the top of the 10, it bounces back to Kiermaier. It's another extra base hit for Xander Bogarts, who now has a double to go along with that triple. Well, that's his 10th double against the Tampa Bay Rays, and along with that triple, this fastball, he smokes it. You see the two seamer running back to him, and this ball's got wall written all over it. Like I said, the ball hits the top of the 10, not that he needed it to, it bounced straight up. Kiermaier couldn't make a play to second base, but he is just eating the Tampa Bay Rays alive. Yeah, they may start walking him. Sitting around 400 against them with a ton of extra base hits, and that'll send up Kinsler 0 for 1. He's grounded to third. So, base hit could tie it. See Kinsler hitting sixth in this lineup. He's a guy that you know you'd think he'd have a lot of opportunities for RBIs hitting six just by putting the ball in play. See him playing up third and first. 1 0. -oh. Knocked foul. Red Sox got him when he was swinging a good bat, too. He's reached base in 18 consecutive games. He's hitting 385. And only four of those games with the Red Sox. It's a weird defensive setup, isn't it? With the first baseman up like that. Torino's with a 1 1. Fly ball into right field, driving back Smith to get under. Xander Bogarts will tag. Here's the throw into third base, and he'll slide in safely. So Kinsler makes it out but does advance the runner. And the Sox have a man the tying run 90 feet away. You see Smith gets this ball he's going to air it out all the way to third base and you see Duffy trying to deke him there acting like the ball's not coming but he threw it all the way there. I thought he I thought he launched this ball over Duffy's head when he first threw it but. In the vicinity. So the infield in and a very unusual alignment with three men stacked on the left side. For Nunez, who's 0 for 1 to fly to right. And the Sox can make another out and tie up the ball game. A backup slider, that was ugly. One nothing. Eduardo as of late swinging a real good bat and in fact at Fenway last nine games he's batting 389. Boy he's licking his chops he wants to yeah, he wanted that high fastball there. And at third base tonight. The runner at third Xander Bogarts with one down. Woo. In there for a strike. It's a splitter. That's the best splitter he's thrown tonight. Looks like a slider, but it's not. It's a, it's a splitter. See the two fingers. Ball tumbles a little bit. Kind of buckled him a little bit. Red Sox like to go on contact, but I don't think they are here. One, two, evens up the count. Swihart on deck. One guy the Red Sox will not see in this series is the ace for Tampa Bay, the left hander Blake Snell, who is 14 and 5 with an ERA of 210. They're going to miss him. Not really going to miss him. And the 2 2. Hard hit. That's fair down the line. 
That'll score the run. Bogarts is in on an RBI base hit by Nunez, who stays hot. Throw back into first base, won't get him, and it's a 3-3 game. Well, the first splitter buckled him just a hair, and he gets another one, and he laces it down the left field line just fair. You see the split finger that doesn't really do much, It does, and he's all over it, absolutely all over it. Lines it right by the diving Duffy down the line. Doesn't go all the way down the corner, bounces off the boxes down there, and that's why you only got a base hit, but he'll take it. RBI ties the game. So the Red Sox have come from 3 0 down to tie it. Two hits in the inning. Swihart do up now. He's 0 for 1 to fly to left. With Jackie Bradley to follow. Red Sox have now forged ahead in hits five to four. And a ground ball toward the middle. And Dallas will go for the tag and will get the out there to set down Nunez safely. At first base is Swihart with two away. How about that? You can't turn a double play ball because of the way they they were in the shift. Adamas behind second base. He's got to go and tag the guy. This is this is kind of weird. Time of the carrying the freight moment brought to you by Old Dominion. Jackie Bradley with another one. A tremendous leaping catch on the warning track. Oh, he's doing this every home stand. He makes a catch like this. This one in particular, diving and then rolling into the wall. Old Dominion, the official freight carrier of Major League Baseball and the Red Sox. He'll ground that one sharply. Wendell will spear it and get him. To retire the side, but the Red Sox have tied it 3 3 at the end of four. Tomorrow on Dining Playbook, Billy chats with Red Sox pitcher Brian Johnson about boating and music. Plus, Billy and Jenny head to Legal Seafood in Chestnut Hill to see the new atrium bar and deck overlooking Hammond Pond. Catch it all on Dining Playbook tomorrow morning at 9 on Nesson, driven by your New England Chevy dealers. I love me some Legal Seafood. Yes, so do I. On to the fifth inning, tied up 3 3. Ooh. Adamas, Perez, and then Smith against Brian Johnson, who's gotten himself a nice groove. He set down ten in a row. Well, he gets it and throws it, and that makes it makes for perfect rhythm. He can dot the corners in and out. Hot shot, scooping that up, Nunez, and he'll set him down. Time now for our Dunkin' Donuts poll question: Do you think teams should use an opener pitcher to start a game like Tampa Bay did tonight? And they do it a lot. 
Text one for yes, two for no. Text your answer to 536536. Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. What do you think? I don't like it, personally. I just don't like it. I, you know, you, I know I'm an old schooler, but it's just, it's hard to really get used to. I mean, I, it's work for them, so will more, more teams try it? That's what I wonder. It doesn't look like it's launching a craze to no, me. No, no. Most people are going, everybody, in fact, going with the traditional, you know, starting alignment, starting rotation. But it's, it's a money thing. It's got to be. It's a money thing. I mean, they they don't want. It's the fifth starter, but it's more than that. I mean, they don't they don't have any starters. Like I said, Snell is their starter, right? I mean, their depth chart is like nothing. Once they lost Archer, and Glass now is pitching now because he came from Pittsburgh and he's taken over for Archer. But that's it. Two starters they have, so they're doing this just to stay in shape, literally. And as you said, do it a lot. Thirty third yeah. time they have used the so-called opener tonight. He went one inning. That'll be ball four. So Perez is on. And second walk issued by Brian Johnson tonight. Tune in to Nesson next Tuesday and Wednesday for coverage of the WEEI Nesson Jimmy Fund Radio Telethon presented by Arbella Insurance Foundation. Arbella Insurance Foundation here for the Jimmy Fund here for good. Alex Smith has gone one for two with a base hit and he's also made a terrific catch running hard into the stands down the right field line. He'll pop this one up on the first pitch. Nunez backing out and he'll make the catch. Sander came over and yeah, for a moment he weren't sure who's going to make that play but Nunez hauls it in and two down. There's a catch by Smith. This ball is slicing off the bat of Nunez. He makes the catch and takes a knee and rib, you name it, into the wall. Mm. You see that slow motion doesn't give it the impact that it had by regular speed. Here's Duffy. He's been doubled up and fly to center. Two down. We are tied up 3 3. You know, out of the gate. Johnson had thrown a bunch of hanging hooks out at first, you know, first inning, a couple bad hanging hooks. But since then, he's been, his rhythm has been there. Runner at first and two away here in the fifth inning. He was not tempted, and it's two and one. You know they're looking curveballs. That's where you can't hang it. You think Brian Johnson? You think curveball? Two one. Game two tomorrow night seven ten. It'll be David Price twelve and six going in. That's why you see him late on his fastball because sitting on curve. What's he going to do? Another gas. Yep, another fastball. 2 2. Couldn't put him away, so a full count. And Perez at first base will be off to the races here with the pitch. See if he tries a challenge here or drop a hook on him. When it goes high, chop. Nunez slings it across and plenty of time to get him. He was a busy man in the inning. Still tied 3 3.
break down key plays of the game and you'll hear from Brian Johnson and Alex Cora who at WB Mason celebrating over 20 years of same day delivery. Bottom five and the top of the order for the Sox bets Benintendi Moreland. Fenway has been filled in between innings with the great sounds of the late great Aretha Franklin all night long. Mookie has flied out and struck out. Chirino staying on. Mookie on a road trip went 15 for 33. Ace ticket is the best seats to all Red Sox games and concerts at Fenway. The prices and service are better than you can imagine. Visit aceticket.com today. He's hit safely in 10 in a row, but hitless so far tonight. And a 2 1. We showed you that graphic on the 99 runs from Mookie, but remember he missed 14 games. A 2 2. High fly ball left center field, backing up Kiermeyer, turning around now, and it is high off the green. Mookie Betts just missing one there. He'll take the double, though, as he scampers into second. You thought maybe gone at the crack of the bat. I did think it was gone, and you know, it was a high splitter. Maybe if it was a fastball, it would have been out of here. This ball's in his eyes. Look at this split finger. I mean, it's just it's just sitting there waiting to be crushed. But you gotta supply your own power, and that ball just he doesn't get, I mean, it gets extension, but I thought you got it up there. It's coming down quickly. Kiermaier back of the wall, backs up. Easy double there by Mookie. The Red Sox have not led tonight. They could in a moment. Benintendi is one for two of the base hit. He's also lined out to left. 299 a batting average with 70 runs batted in. Nobody out. Benintendi scored his career high 85th run on Wednesday. He's had another one tonight. Last 30 games, he's batting 350 on base of 430. That's going to advance the runner. Wendell will pick it. Mookie bets down to third. That's all you got to do. He's probably upset, but you know, you get the runner over, you do your job. It's a 3 3 game. You got to get that runner over. Tune in tonight for Nesson's news coverage. You get a breakdown of the Patriots around the league as they prepare for the 2018 season. Coverage of the NFL preseason is brought to you by Cross Insurance, where security meets strength. Now runner at third base now, and the infield comes creeping in. Moreland has flied out and grounded out. To the second baseman. And it'll be in there for strike one. Mitch has driven in 61 runs, 14 home runs. It's a spot typically he's very proficient in getting that run in. Sox have rallied from three nothing down. They were down three to nothing before they came to bat tonight. And Bogarts laced a two run triple in the first inning to cut it to one. And the fourth inning Nunez with an RBI single to bring in Bogarts to a double to tie it. Line shot up the middle that'll be a base hit. That skipped through everybody and a run is in. Well, a cracker up the middle. 
And the Red Sox have a 4 3 lead. Well, he started him off with a fastball that he took, I thought was a good pitch to hit. And he laid off the next one, got another fastball, and he drills it. So Mookie Betts scoring for the 100th time. Second Red Sox player to have three 100 RB or three 100 run seasons before the age of 26. You see the fastball almost drilled two people. Hit so hard it easily went through. Couldn't stop that bullet. 100 runs, huh? In awfully good company. The Red Sox have gone ahead for three. Martinez, the batter. JD tonight with a walk and a run. He was aboard when Bogart's triple in the first inning. He's also flied out to right. So the Red Sox come all the way back and now have the lead for the first time. One hundred and four RBI for Martinez. Orland the base runner one down here comes the one one pitch from Chirinos. And a dribbler foul. JD's going to score 100 runs. He's at 89 right now. The next hit will be his 100. And 48th. Crowd eager for a little more offense. Here comes the one two. Got jam there, 94. He's made some good pitches there to JD Chirinos. So to bad split fingers, he gave Moreland a good fastball to hit. You gotta remember there's what 40 games left. You talk about all these numbers. Mm. 40 games left. Yes, that includes tonight. And a one two from the right hander. Even up. Red Sox would need to go 20 and 20 or better in the last 40 to break the franchise single season wins record of 105. Our polos are designed by Joseph Abud. They're made in America using only the finest Italian fabrics available at Men's Warehouse. You can text Nesson 1 to 66960. And receive $100 off your next Joseph Abood custom suit purchase at Men's Warehouse. Data rates may apply. And a 2 2 to JD Martinez. And a full count. Bogart's on deck. He's on his way to a major night with a triple and a double already. Look at that gap. They exaggerate everything, Tampa. Payoff pitch to the third baseman down to scoop it Duffy. He'll go to first, and that's the play into second is Moreland with two down. Tonight after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today, we'll have a full recap of tonight's Sox game, plus a recap of Bruins Fan Fest. Nesson Sports Today is presented by People's United Bank, where the technology is as helpful as the people. Zandu with a two-run triple in the first inning and a double and a run in the fourth inning. He has another RBI chance. Against a pitching staff, he's been dominating this year. 
Orland the base runner with two away. And a strike. Four runs on seven hits for the Sox. Three runs on four hits for Tampa Bay. They get all their runs in the first inning. Chirinos with the 0 1. Comes the 1 1 to Bogarts. Won't chase it. Kinsler on deck. Oh, he hung him a high split finger last time up. Fastball sliders this time. Well, Chirino's really slowing his tempo with a base runner. Allowed two hits in the inning and allowed the Red Sox to take the lead. And they're looking for more. The 2 1 popped up this time. Wendell, the second baseman, right near the bag to put that away. The Red Sox grabbed the lead on the Moreland base hit to make it 4 3. Top of the sixth inning, Red Sox up by a run now on Tampa Bay. Dennis Eckersley, Dave O'Brien, and Jemai Webster with you from Fenway. Now Tommy Fan, the leadoff man here in the sixth inning, will be followed by Crone and then Wendell. Next pitch will be the 76th of the ball game and in it for a strike. So we'll see how long Alex Cora likes to go with Brian Johnson. Yeah, you know somebody's throwing along with him right now. They don't want to. He's had trouble as we've seen in past sixth and seventh inning. He's cruised before through five. See Hembry out there getting it. Would seem a wise choice to go to that pen after six, wouldn't it? Yeah, drop that little curveball in. Well, he had a rough first inning, but he has been near perfect since then. Shot out to right. Mookie Betts taken off. He's there to make the catch. And now the warning track. 
Pham launching that one, but that is out number one. Brian Johnson's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. So five and a third. Three earned runs. They all came in the first inning. And in fact, he's not allowed to hit since then. Right. He hasn't given up anything the last five innings. Here's Crone now. He has doubled. He's also popped up to the catcher. Thought about it. They do appeal, but no swing. He just mixes it up. He just not anything special, not you know, overpowering stuff at, by any means. Crone's father, Chris, played briefly in the majors with the Angels, also with the White Sox. He's currently a minor league hitting coordinator with the Diamondbacks. Brother Kevin is a first baseman in the Diamondbacks organization, so a lot of baseball in the Crone family in the count one and two. Wendell on deck. Little tantalizing breaking balls he's thrown on. Doesn't hit the corner, just makes you go out there and get it. Lefty looking for a K, the one two coming. Two two. Just show you that. Sox have won 18 of their last 21 games at Fenway Park. Back home for seven. It'll be outside and a full count. Well, he wore it out out there. He's thrown three balls on that corner there. He didn't get it. Ball's outside. What's he do three and two? Back to that hook. The third. Hoovered up by Nunez. On target, two down. After the game, stay tuned for the Red Sox final presented by Rodenheiser Plumbing, Heating, AC, and Electric with TC Wake and Steve. And in the pregame, they highlighted on the Rodenheiser Heat Zone, Mookie Betts hot entering the game. Crone as cold is what they've done so far tonight. Wendell has doubled in a pair. He's also grounded out to second. DC Wake and Steve had to do the pregame show from the booth tonight instead of on the field because it was raining. A little crowded in here. It was crowded. And Ooh. luckily, the Dunkin' Donuts delivery came just as they were leaving because otherwise it stood no chance. <laughs> I mean, none. That was ball game. Yes, yeah, Steve, Steve's supposed to be on a diet, right? He's supposed to be. Actually, he looks good. Yeah, he does. Needs a haircut, though. So do I. <laughs> so, don't we That's all? That's why man. I can't hoot on him. <laughs> well, you can. Yeah, sure I can. 2 1. Dropped it in there at 89. He mixes it up. Then he's all over the strike zone. He can throw a fastball, curveball. I mean, he just he just has a knack for pitching. He just does. Well, you gotta love his tempo. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And he works good with Swihart. I've been watching how they go about it. And if he does doesn't want the pitch, he hurries up and gives him another sign. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Sticking with his yeah. rhythm, yeah. He's got first two here in the sixth inning. And a two mm, two will miss missed. for ball three. He picks too, doesn't he? Just outside. He threw a good curveball to Crone, keep the ball in the ballpark. Crone three two last out. He's working hard tonight on a humid evening. And the 3 2 roll foul. Embry's still working in the bullpen with Gomez on deck. 
I mean, he loses Wendell here. I don't think he faces Gomez. I would agree. Oh, yeah. This is his last hitter, period. Payoff pitch. And a high twisting fly to left field. Benintendi back for the wall. He's going to have to play it off the wall, and that's going to be at least a double. Wendell will be held at second base. So he doubles for the second time. And that'll be it. And here comes the Sox manager. So five and two thirds leaving the tying run at second base. And there's the call. It'll be Hembry coming on. So the night over for the left hander Brian Johnson. Been such a valuable guy for the Red Sox this season. Boy coming back after that first inning. It's impressive. Yep, gave up three runs in the first nothing after that In fact that double was the only hit he allowed after the first inning. We're going to take the break. Hembry coming on Red Sox on top by one and we'll have more in just a moment. Weekend as Brock Holt and Andrew Benatendi put their best jokes to the test in the second edition of Laugh Your Socks Off. Catch it all on all new Nesson Clubhouse Sunday at 11:30 on Nesson, presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. Well, those two can crack each other up. That won't take very long. Runner at second base, and Hembry gets a check swing foul. It almost got Kiermaier in the on deck area. Jake Bowers is the hitter, and Kiermaier almost got drilled. Bowers hitting now for Gomez when one for two. This guy's in a one for 20 slump. He's got some power though. And 221 with nine home runs. Embry taking over for Brian Johnson. Tying run at second. Embry's had 28 inherited runners. Only five have scored. He's, he comes in. This is the guy. This is the designated guy to bring in. He's been clutch all year. One one. Wendell at second with a two run double a two out double I should say. He also had a two run double in the first inning. Well they got three runs right away against Brian Johnson but they have not scored since then. We 
well, you, you don't, don't have to. You want to make a mistake with that slider. You want to make sure you get it in there. See if he tries to bury a slider down and in. Or chase the high fastball. 2 2. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Lunging tag and he got him. And it's a strikeout. That runner held at second base. Good work by Hembry. Duncan's new brown sugar cold brew. All the boldness you expect from cold brew coffee. Sweetly balanced with brown sugar. Price and participation may vary. This is a limited time offer. Last half of the sixth inning coming up from Fenway. Red Sox up by a run. Chirino still out there. And Kinsler first man in against him in the sixth. He's got 0 for 2. Oh. That one sails up and over the hard hat. It got away. Not a fastball. Is this a split finger or something? How did this thing get away? What do you got? Probably trying to throw it. That's a fastball. It's a two seamer. He's trying to throw on the outside corner. Look at it. All the way to the screen. It's 86 miles an hour. So it was a lot harder than that. I think he was trying to do that and totally slipped. Well, Ian tonight is grounded out to third and fly to right. Nunez on deck and then Blake Swihart. Red Sox had Brazier going in the pen. Embry certainly did his job. Big strikeout of Bowers there to freeze a runner at second. And that is going to miss according to home plate umpire Whitson for ball four. So Kinsler is on. Red Sox Hall of Famer Tim Wakefield in the green room. And Wake, how you doing tonight? What do you think of Brian Johnson's effort? Hey guys, I thought Brian Johnson did a great job tonight after the first inning. You know, he had he had a little bit of a struggle after getting the first two outs quickly with the double play, then a then a then a walk, and then three straight base hits. Got out of the inning, giving up three runs, but after that he retired like 11 in a row before a walk there in the fifth, and then almost got through the sixth inning with that. Uh, that was a long at bat um, by uh, Wendell to uh, and hit a double. But I thought his 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 pace was great. Uh, he was mixing his pitches. He found the strike zone. Uh, 
later after the first inning, I, th I thought he left a couple pitches up in the zone, that, which led to three runs. But I thought he pitched, he pitched a great game tonight. You know, to me, Wake, his thing is his curveball. I think everybody looks for his curveball, but he just sort of tempts you with it. A little here, a little there. And obviously, he doesn't throw the ball all that hard, but he just mixes it up so well. Yeah, he does a great job of changing speeds. He doesn't throw hard. He's with 88 to 90, but then his curveball's in the 70s, so it's it's awesome. I'd like to see him actually change his speeds with his curveball as well. You know, you entice a guy to swing at a 74 and then maybe throw one 70. Flying in the center field. Kinsler had taken off. He will retreat to first base. Wake, we love those guys who work fast, as you did. The guys with a very quick tempo. We all look forward to those, but... I would think more guys would want to do that and keep your infield lively and active as you did throughout your terrific career. Well, absolutely. Well, I, I mean, I had I had an excuse. I threw one pitch and one right. pitch only, so I was able to not have to look at the catcher too much. And you know, Brian Johnson, he throws he throws a changeup too, but I didn't see too many of those with him tonight. He threw you know fastball, curveball. He did a great job mixing mixing those speeds up a little bit. You know, fastball in, fastball out, fastball up, uh, and his curveball was really really good tonight. Wake, thanks so much. We'll thanks, look forward guys. to watching yeah, it a little thanks, bit later Wake. on tonight. Red Sox on top here, 4 3. The great Tim Wakefield joining us. We'll be back there with Steve and TC. Yeah. It's Weihart 0 for 2 tonight. Kinsler, a guy now who will run 11 stolen bases for him this season. He's always been a good base stealer. Time will be granted here. Sox are trying to take an 11 and a half game lead over the Yankees. The Yankees are in a real battle with Toronto, 5 5, fifth inning. Red Sox a team getting healthier. This is not good news for the rest of the American League. Kinsler back. Oh yeah. Swihart is back. Eduardo Rodriguez is closing in on returning. You don't want Kinsler to get crazy here and I like that he runs but at the same time I mean he just got healthy. Give it a couple of days don't you think. <laughs> yeah. I mean really. But he's always been a base stealer. Yep, he has. Likes to run. Fits in with this group. Not running here, that's a strike. Swihart was swinging the bat so well before he went on the DL, I thought. Torinos with a 1 1. On the infield, Tapper. Wendell will flip it on the second, got the out, but no double play. So they do get the man in the middle, and Ian Kinsler. On the next on course with Andy Brickley, Bruins head coach Bruce Cassidy returns to the greens of Mount Hood Golf Club for a rematch. Catch it all on a new episode on Course with Andy Brickley tomorrow at 5 30 on Nesson. Ooh, I've done that before. Have you done the show yet? No. How come you haven't been invited yet? That's right up your alley. I'm just a busy man. You are. Yeah. <laughs> you are. You are a busy man, but I want to know you've been invited. Oh right. Okay. We get a Hall of Famer out there. Not maybe not necessarily in golf. No, no, not even close. I know that you're, you're like every other professional athlete who have ever played golf with any of us. You're way better than you, you want to let anybody think. Okay, you could think that. <laughs> Jackie, one for two, a single. Lifts a high, twisting fly into left field. Get out of here. Looking up, looking up. That is off the green. That might bring in a run. Here comes Swihart. He is going to score standing up on the double by Jackie Bradley. Red Sox lead it five to three. Boy, he just missed a home run here, Jackie. I think he got a fastball up and he just 
This is perfect. Two seamer runs back over the plate. That ball is like he's got to go and get it, and he just lifts it up in the ball up in the air. Look at just missed a home run. About a foot away from a home run, but he'll take the RBI double. Got Swihart. He can run too, can he? This is a catcher. He's getting it, man. This is that's no catcher running right there. That's not Leon <laughs> running, that's for sure. Mookie Betts one for three tonight with a double. Red Sox hit five three. Jackie Bradley with a couple of hits. Xander Bogarts has a couple of hits. Mookie trying to provide a larger cushion here against Chirinos. Mookie extending his hitting streak to 11 in a row with a double in the fifth inning and scored his 100th run of 2018. Got a leadoff man hitting 352 with 27 home runs and he scored 100 runs in Mookie Betts. He's had a really fine August. Sitting about 450 in the month of August. Seems like he's pulling everything. It doesn't matter. He's in 350. Going after his first batting title. And a 2 0. Popped up in the center field. Wendell backpedaling out. Kiermaier coming in, and the second baseman will take it. And that will retire the side, but the Red Sox score and now make it five to three. Donuts poll question do you think teams should use an opener pitcher like Tampa Bay does to start a game and this was a runaway absolutely not 82 percent of you hate the idea good I'm glad hate the idea yes they said hate That's, that was my interpretation <laughs> of 82 <I> percent mean, <laughs> the higher it goes the more hate. yeah pretty That's obvious it. yes Top of the seventh inning, Red Sox had 5 3. Ryan Brazier out of the pen where he's been so good. A 113 DRA. And once again, pitching in high leverage situations. Two run game here in the seventh would qualify. Kiermaier has gone 0 for 2. Came in in Baltimore on Sunday, you remember, and he came in with the bases loaded, got a punch out. That was a big out in that game. 
But he look at the numbers. He has just been incredible. Everybody knows his name now. Brazier. Ground ball deep short and through for a base hit. No play for Xander Bogart. So Kiermaier's on to begin the seventh inning as we go down to Jemiah Webster. Well, Dave, you guys just put up the Duncan poll question, and I had a chance to talk with Rays manager Kevin Cash as well as their pitching coach Kyle Snyder about this starter by committee approach. They both feel like it's going well, but Cash said it's not something that's set in stone. He says they're still trying to discover navigating through this, but what he does like about it is that it's given their young pitchers, because their staff is very young, it's given the opportunity to have success at this level. And one thing that he says, it all started with veteran closer Sergio Romo, and because he bought into to it it's made it easier for the other guys to do and that's why they feel like it's been a successful formula for their ball club. Well yeah you'd have to say for them and what they're trying to do which is stay above 500 right I mean, it, it's working for it's them. It's working for them because they've got seven rookies on the staff. What are the rookies going to do they're going to balk at that stuff. I mean, you do what you're supposed to do you're trying to make your mark in the big leagues any way you can you see Sergio Romo he's been around the block. Had some big years with the San Francisco Giants in their championship years. There's some thought, you know, because of his veteran experience, his postseason experience, he might be a trade guy for them. Yeah. That didn't happen. Well, they traded all their hitters, is what they did. And obviously, Archer was the big trade for them. Adamas, the batter, 0 for 2. We're going to see a pitcher tomorrow night that they got from Pittsburgh for. Archer Chris Archer I thought that was you know for the longest time they never parted ways with him. I never thought they would. I mean he was cheap. He's had a five year deal. He signed short money. Right. Yeah I was surprised they dealt him too. He could change his scenery could do him a lot of good. Probably. Uh, flared foul. National League. Mm -hmm. Here are the Red Sox on top five three in the seventh inning. Game one against Tampa Bay and then we're going to see the Cleveland Indians it's the only opponent on the schedule the Red Sox have yet to play. I'm looking forward to seeing the Indians see what they got. Good ball club a lot of talent for Terry Francona. Got a couple of MVP candidates. And Ramirez and Lindor. You know Trevor Bauer who is up in the Cy Young. You'd say right now near the very top. Yeah, over 200 strikeouts. Let's say running behind Chris Sale and most people's thoughts, but runner goes. And it's going to be Luke File out of play, but he's on a DL right now. He's going to be out four to six weeks with a fracture in his his leg after taking a line drive shot. Now he says he'll be back quicker than that, but that's what they're saying right now. Four yeah, to six weeks. That's tough. I, I heard he was like on his knees throwing 100 feet today. Mm -hmm. So he's got to keep his arm going just like Erod kept his arm going with that angle ankle injury. And we'll see how quickly he makes it back. They are hopeful of getting him back certainly before postseason play. Count okay, runs full now on Adamas. Runner at first nobody out. Kind of surprising they started the runner two pitches ago. That is Kiermaier. And Brazier with a 3 2 runner taken off. He struck him out. He's the throw down the tag. Got him. A strike him out throw by double play. It was there just waiting to happen. 3 2 pitch fastball by you. Oh, that's a thing of beauty for the Red Sox. You knew he's gone. You know, and he's not going to get as good a jump as if he's just trying to steal a bag. But fastball punched him out. You see the tag by Kinsler. Beautiful up the baseline. That's exactly what you're looking for. Beautiful. You know, I mean, Kiermaier can run a little bit too, but that throw up the line. That's exactly what you want to do. It's all about the tag by Kinsler. Boy, he threw a seed down to second too. He came out of his shoes, man. He was waiting for a strike him out, throw him out. So in the blink of an eye, two down for Perez, who's flied out and taking ball four. We are in the seventh inning. Sox up by two. And a rattle foul. Back to that tag. 
To me, that's what it's all about, that tag. Up the line, just hold it, got him right before he gets in. Well, he's a really good defender, isn't he? He really is. Want a couple of gold gloves? I can't get over that play he made against the Yankees up the middle. Huh? That was spectacular, I thought. I asked him about it. He said, I pretty much just threw it in the vicinity of first base. Yeah, just and heave it. He, right? And he said, you know, you make a couple of those a year. Yeah. And he makes a couple of those a year. You I'm just go for it. Yeah. Yep. That's what he did. He, he threw it in that area. He knows where first base is, but and it was when, a blind throw. It was a blind throw. And when you make that throw and it, it's good, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was some play. That sucks. Very to have, very lucky to have Ian Kinsler as the everyday second baseman. Boy, he's got to love being here. Are you kidding me coming into this? Base is empty, two down, and the 2 2. Try to hold up a swing and a miss. That is strike three, and Brazier in the end faces only three men in the seventh inning. Change is a proud sponsor of the Jimmy Fund. Customers who give a dollar to benefit the Jimmy Fund at participating Valvoline instant oil chain stores receive kids and family scratch cards with a guaranteed prize. All proceeds will benefit the Dana Farber Cancer Institute at the Jimmy Fund. Bottom of the seventh, Red Sox hit 5 3. Andrew Benintendi lead it off against Chirinos. Really hasn't pitched that badly since he came on after the first inning. No, he has to, so you know to me it's like why didn't you start the first inning I, you know it, what it happens is you don't have to face a lineup three times that's what they're trying to get away from such a big deal nowadays you just don't the starting pitcher can't face the lineup three times right so you avoid that the first at bat in the first inning but he had a tough first inning Stanek looked Stanek bad did. he was wild wasn't he he threw hard but he was so wild he gave up a couple of hits two run double the Bogarts walked the man kind of all over the place. Almost got out of it. But he does bring it. He was throwing 99. Three oh wrapped up the middle that was smoked. Throw on to first base will get him. That ball was absolutely smoked wasn't it. And that dude is behind second base. Everybody everywhere. You cannot get a hit there. It's time Adamas. It's time for a game break brought to you by George the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Here's TC. Oh. 
<laughs> you're really getting carried away. Yeah. Thanks, DC. Here are the Red Sox leading it five to three. Moreland a batter one for three with an RBI single. It's a high twisting fly to left field. Fam is back in the warning track. He's turning around. That's going to catch a lot of the green. That becomes a Fenway double for Mitch Moreland, his second hit tonight. He'll take it. That ball was coming down so fast. I mean, talk about a scraper, huh? How far is this ball hit? High fastball out over. He just gets it in the air. Wind's not even blowing out. If it was, it's probably a dinger. Look at this thing. It's up there forever, and it comes straight down. Because watch the bounce. Boing, you know, straight down. Look this place is tough. Man. Left hand hitter Fenway yeah, will please. take in give. This time a double for Moreland, but that'll bring up JD Martinez. He's gone 0 for 2 on the walk and a run tonight. Bang. He hits a score to the left field. Moreland on into third. They're going to wave him. Here he comes. He is in the score. That'll be on number 105 for JD Martinez. You Red can't Sox hold him down. Six to three. You cannot hold him down. He's got an RBI out there. You know what he wants to do. It's a bullet to left field. Look at ball trying to get in on him, but he smokes it to left field. It's enough. It's out there deep enough that they don't even attempt to throw the ball home. But the RBI again for J.D. Martinez just to stay in shape. One hundred and five and counting. Sends up Xander Bogarts. Good night. A triple, a double. He's two for three. Red Sox have a little picket fence going between the fourth and seventh innings now as Barnes gets loose in the bullpen, scoring a single run in every one of the last four innings. Martinez on with one down, a six to three lead. The Red Sox fell behind in this one in the first inning, three to nothing. But with the Red Sox of 2018, no lead appears to be safe. And you just knew the Red Sox would make a comeback in this one, and they have once again. Trying to get to 51 games over 500 again. Two one. Fouled off himself, and he goes down and grabbing at that left leg. Yeah, you never like to see that. He doesn't do it all that often. Getting up a little hobble. Brad Pearson out to check on him. Ball's going to get him in the shin, I think. Ow, right yeah. in the shin. Ow. He doesn't have a guard on there either. No, that's why he just doesn't do it all that often. That pitch is not really a pitch you'd think you'd hit off your shin. Oof. Yeah. If there is such a thing that you a pitch that you hit off your shin, usually it's at that back foot slider that you swing over the top of. Yep. I'll tell you what makes this lineup, you know, it's relentless lineup, but what that makes this lineup great is when Jackie Bradley Jr. does something. I mean it's it makes it just impossible when you got him down there. And he's two hits tonight. Yes. I mean, he's been tough. Hit some dingers. He's been just, you know, he just, he's down there, just looming down there. Yeah, you're right. When this lineup turns over, a little pop up foul out of play. It's even more deadly. Yes. Tonight, six runs on 10 hits for the Sox. And for Tampa Bay, three runs, six hits. Neither side has committed an error. Sox had yesterday off and still picked up half a game in the Yankees. 
So this Tampa team is going to throw out a starter finally tomorrow. Glass now the guy they got from Pittsburgh and then they're going to do the same thing on Sunday. Shot in the left field down the line. They've hit some hard ones in this inning for sure. Rounding second Martinez heading into third. Here's the throw to second. They're both safe. That's 11 doubles. That's his second double and his third extra base hit tonight. 11 doubles off of Tampa and then add that triple to it. He has, I mean, please, it's beyond wearing somebody out. Torinos tries to throw a fastball outside corner. That's not outside corner. That ball is middle in. And he smoked it all the way to the base of the green monster. Second and third and one down. He just eats Tampa Bay alive. Time now for what's brewing in Boston presented by Sam Adams the official beer of the Boston Red Sox and at 86 and 36 the Sox would need to go 20 and 20 or better in the last 40 which includes tonight to break the franchise single season record of 105 wins set in 1912. <clears throat> and a chance to really put a hurt on Tampa Bay now. They do have activity finally in their bullpen. Diego Castillo is going to get going to right hander but he has just started to warm up the infield is in. And Kinsler will climb in he's gone 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. One gone and two men in scoring position Martinez at third. Bogarts at second. Got so excited about Bogarts hitting the double, I couldn't even talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I started choking on something. Maybe it's that, that turkey sandwich I was hitting on in between oh, innings. Oh, you're going to have to go back to the ham, I think. I'm telling you. Here's the 1 0. Down the line, backhand, went for the tag. He's safe there. Throw across and in time to get Kinsler. Looking for a double play, which would have been pretty cagey by Duffy, but he could not get the out at third. Thank goodness JD was close enough to the back to get back, because that would have been a an ugly double play, wouldn't it? Be would have tagged him right there, but he's on the back barely. And gets Kinsler. Get back. Nunez one for three with a base hit to drive in a run. Single could mean two more here. You know, Bogarts has been wearing them out so much you'd think they'd drill him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just on the heels of what happened in Atlanta. I thought they right? might at least walk him. I mean, really. He is killing Tampa Bay and that'll Look skip that. away. That skips right into the crowd, right into the stands. Another run is in. Well, they've uncorked a couple of major oh. league wild pitches in this game. How about the deflection on this? This thing is that's ridiculous. There's a screen over there and it goes all the way into the seats. And that's a run. Obviously. Look at this. Boing, this thing is gonna just eject out of there. Yeah, if it had a sound effect, it would be boing. boing. <laughs> no question. Bogarts <laughs> well, moving up, line shot, and that's caught. Red Sox hit one bullet after another in the inning. Nothing to show an added bat, but well struck by Nunez. Red Sox leading it seven to three at the end of seven.
Football on Nesson is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees, that's transparency. And by the all-new Subaru Ascent, love is now bigger than ever this summer. And Red Sox chairman Tom Werner delighted by the results so far tonight. I would say all season long too. Oh, he's loving it. Top half of the eighth inning. Red Sox with a 7-3 lead. Barnes coming out of the bullpen. And he will get the top of the order here for Tampa Bay. Brazier did a really nice job in the seventh inning, and so did Hembry with a big K with a runner scoring position in the sixth inning. Alex Smith with a single. He's also whiffed and he's popped up to third. Sox about hit them 11 6. Barnes has had a nice season for the Red Sox. He's had his moments, but he's held to get 24 holds on the season. Little dribbler here, swinging bunt. Barnes to bare hand gun. Close, got him. Out at first base. Malik Smith had an interesting night tonight. Made a wonderful catch down the right field line. Paid the price. And he could fly too, but he went and got the ball, and he's got a gun anyway. Just trying to get it there. Bang, bang. That's close play. He's out. And they want to challenge it. See him get out of the box right there. This is a really close play. So this play is under review. A challenge. We gotta slow that down now. Let me see this thing. Oh, what do you think? What are you gonna go with? I think he's safe. Man, that's a dead heat. Yeah, you gotta see the glove. The ball goes into the webbing. That's the thing, you know. Looks wow. like the foot's on the on the bag. Yep, yeah, I would say safe. Okay. Wouldn't you? Yes. So this was a worthy challenge. Let's see what New York comes up with. Red Sox leading it seven to three. By the way, the RBI by JD Martinez with the base hit in seventh inning gives him 105 RBIs. That's a new career high for him. Yeah. For him, yes. And what has been a sensational year for JD. Taking a very close look at this thing, and now they have an answer. And he is safe. So Smith will be on with a base hit for the second time. Infield hit here. In front of Matt Duffy. Duffy tonight 0 for 3 hit into a double play in the first inning. So also fly to center and tap to third. And oh. nicked him. Yeah that hit him. And he wasn't going to move. Made no effort. He made no effort to move. He just stayed there knowing that he'll take it. You know this ball barely clipped him. I mean barely clipped him. But he just went to first base like he knew that ball just nicked him. Well now the Red Sox want to challenge this. Whether it hit him. OK. Did you hear a double tip. I thought it nicked him. But what do I know. I mean that was you know. It was so quick now you slow the thing down and. Just barely got him. We're going to listen to this. OK let's listen. Sounds like sounds it. like a clip, doesn't it? it? Do. Yeah. And not only that, Duffy's not going to fake pump you like it didn't hit him. I mean, that's like it's classless if he did something like that. He didn't lean into it. You no. know, he pulled the hands back yeah. a little bit. So he's not going to fake anybody out. Like, oh, I think if you go by sound there, yeah, just that's oh. a hit batsman. But it is under review a challenge by Alex Cora. Yeah, it's one thing if it nicks your shirt but it you know it caught his 
the bottom pad of his his hand. Take a really close look on this. His left hand, you know, the pad at the bottom of your hand. All right. I mean, barely, man. Did it change directions a hair? And it will be a hit batsman. Yes. So they uphold the call. First and second. And nobody out for Tommy Pham, who's coming up. He's walked and scored, lined out and lined out again. Crowd booing, but they don't have the audio that we have. Right. Nobody out, two on. Barnes taking on the number three hitter who's hit 14 home runs. In there for a strike. David Price going tomorrow night for the Red Sox, going in at 12 and 6. Coming off an outstanding performance in Baltimore. As he fan 10 and walk anybody in six innings. He's thrown good for a long time. Byron's looking for a double play at somebody. A world of no throw. He start off a hitter with a good breaking ball, put you in a great position like he is right now. Smith at second, Duffy on at first. Rays have played the Red Sox very close most of the season. Although the Sox have a 9 4 lead in the season series, and that's rolled foul. Red Sox season began at Tropicana Field way back on the 29th of March. He's Captain Hook. You see the numbers there, huh? You can see that knuckle coming out of the back of his glove if you're on second base. See if he's got it locked in there. One two coming. Yes, and he got him 96 miles an hour to freeze him. One away. If you have that curveball on your brain at any thought of that curveball, he throws this gas. This is 97, kind of up and away, top of the strike zone. That's a strike. You got to sit down. That'll bring up Crone, who has double popped up and grounded out. One for three. Brian Johnson went the first five and two thirds. And he can win it. That went right past him. 98. Would have been a strike had he not swung. They've got rain in New York now holding up the Yankees and Toronto. With New York in the lead seven to five. Ninety seven that time. Uh, hitter has no chance at that ball upstairs there. Well jumping out of his hand too. Wendell on deck. And he's got that curveball waiting for you any time to put you away. No as hard as you can up there. Now do you come back with the yacker here. I throw him a yacker but that you could pick, I think you could do anything you want. I think you could throw a curveball or fastball. I don't think this guy's got a chance. He's been late on the heat. Yes I know I mean. Two on one down. Pop them up. On the breaking ball on the infield infield fly and effect and Kinsler puts that away two down. 
Get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center at Fenway Park located behind section 12 in the lower concourse. Visit BIDMC.org. So with two down it'll be Joey Wendell who did damage in the first inning with a two run double. They had a three nothing lead. And they punched they punched us in the face didn't they. Boom boom boom. And they were running and they were I mean they were doing it all that first inning. I said what is going on. Yeah, three runs four hits in that first inning. Haven't done anything since. Yep, They have failed to score since then. Wendell since that at bat has grounded out and doubled again. Smith at second, Duffy at first. Pounded in there at 98. You want a head start on your Boston sports news? Subscribe to Boston, excuse me, Nesson.com daily email newsletter that lead and start your morning with the latest headlines in New England sports. Go to Nesson.com slash newsletter to subscribe now. Two away. Here comes the 0 1 to Wendell. So he's got him in a hole, nothing in two. Well, he gets in trouble and he can find his way out of it with his stuff. Barnes with the 0-2. He got him. He struck him out, scooped up by Swihart. He'll throw on, and that will do it. Two men stranded. Red Sox leading it 7-3 in the middle of the eighth inning. Captain Hook. <laughs> Site for deals by Toyota.com and by William Ravis Real Estate, the official realtor of the Boston Red Sox, who will hold a 7 3 lead on Tampa Bay game one of the three game series. Heading off to the last half of the eighth inning, Rays will bring on a new pitcher, the right hander, Diego Castillo. He can bring it. His average fastball velocity, 97 miles per hour. He's maxed out at 99. And Swihart, first man in against him. On Wednesday against the Yankees in the Bronx, he tossed a scoreless ninth inning and a six to one win. They took two out of three in that series. Hey. 
Now you tell me who doesn't throw 95 plus nowadays. I mean, it's just like what new. 95 is like an average fastball. I know. It's like a big deal. Swihart is 0 for 3, but scored a run after reaching out a fielder's choice in the sixth inning. Yeah, Swihart had a big strike him out, throw him out earlier in this game. Brazier on the mound, fastball right by the hitter, and the throw up the line. Nice tag by Kinsler. You see, up the line gets Kiermaier. Built for baseball, presented by T Mobile. And that one foul tipped in the mitt and he struck him out. One out in the bottom of the eighth. Jackie Bradley will be next. So some milestones achieved in this game so far tonight. J.D. Martinez has reached 105 RBI for the first time in his career. Mookie Betts has scored 100 runs for the third time in his career. No, by the way, it's the 17th of August. And after tonight, 39 games remain. Tyler Thornburg getting loose in the bullpen. Jackie Bradley tonight a single and a run scoring double. He's also made a standout catch in center on the warning track. This guy's got a great cut fastball. I know he's got hair, 98, but Jackie swung at that cutter down and in. I mean, it's like silly, man. That's so hard. Well, he called Castillo up from Triple A Durham back in June. They always find bullpen guys, don't they? Don't they? Every year they make a five, six different guys. I chop on the infield. Adamas will zip it on to get him. Two down. Wednesday, August 29th is the Mookie Betts Puzzle Cube Night at Fenway Park. The first 10,000 fans in attendance will receive a Mookie Betts Puzzle Cube presented by Sitco. For tickets and more information, visit redsock.com slash promos. Mookie Betts, he knows how to do that. That What's the name of that? Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube. And he, he can do it in a matter of a minute. It's incredible. As we all know, he's a great bowler, too. Yes. What, 9, 10, 11 perfect games, something what like if that. He's a good golfer. Maybe he's not a good golfer. You mean we found something he can't do? I don't know. He probably doesn't care about golf, right? If you're he, bowling. I think if he set his mind to yeah, it, it'd, guess, be, it'd right. be really good. Pretty good at this sport. Yeah, he's really good at this one. Two down, bases empty. Red Sox head seven to three. Maybe this guy will start tomorrow. It's not beyond the realm, <laughs> believe me. You, that's the, how crazy the this they, is. The way they do it with these <laughs> openers. Check swing. The appeal, no swing. Speedway donating $500 to Boston Children's Hospital for every Red Sox home run and through the end of August. Use your Speedy Rewards card when you purchase three cooler beverages and receive 1,000 bonus points. High fly, very high to center field, driving back here. Myers still backing up, still backing up. He's got it right at the base of the wall. Jeez. Four out number three as we head on to the ninth inning. Red Sox up seven to three. The fight against cancer is ongoing. And the
five years to extend their commitment to helping people lead tobacco free lives. You can learn more at CBS Health dot com slash be the first. So Tyler Thornburg coming on not a save situation. 473 ERA is 16th appearance. Ninth inning Red Sox leading at seven to three here in game one with Tampa Bay. Jake Bauer is the batter. He's only had one at bat. Came out a hit for Gomez in the sixth inning and struck out. Yeah, Hembry threw him a nasty slider down and in. Big pitch of the game. Red Sox have gotten very good work out of the bullpen so far tonight. Everybody doing their thing. Barnes had to work hard out of getting out of that inning last last inning, but a big curveball. Boy, I tell you, they talked about him throwing that curveball what 52 percent of the time the last month or whatever. That is devastating that curveball when you see guys swing at it in the dirt. Yeah he had two strikeouts in the eighth inning. That's a cross for a strike at 92. Then they count them all up it'll be another sellout here at Fenway Park tonight as that one's roped foul. Red Sox had sold out their last 21 consecutive home games. Tonight we'll add to that list. Watching what has been a remarkable season. Three and two to count. Thornberg yanking that fastball, this first hitter. Payoff pitch to Bowers. Snagged by Kinsler, and from the outfield, grass sets him down. One gone in the ninth. Time for our refreshing finish brought to you by Coors Light. Well, he hadn't gotten a hit and he hadn't gotten an RBI, and he did it all on this one. A fastball in, it's a rope to left field, scores Moreland. Beat goes on for JD. A great night for him. That's 105 RBI. That is a new career high for him in any season. With 39 games left in the regular season after tonight. Kiermaier has gone one for three with a base hit. He was part of a strike him out, throw him out double play in the seventh inning when he was gunned down trying to take second. Our game summary brought to you by Xfinity. Brian Johnson can pick up the win. Xander Bogart just carves Tampa Bay three for four, three extra base hits tonight. That'll be picked off. Thornburg up and over his ground ball and he gets him two down. Nicely done, yo. You don't know what you're capable of when balls come back to the mound. Nice pick here. Sharply hit, yes. No big deal. Little pick. No big deal. No big deal. Two up, two down. Willie Adamas, maybe the last man to hit tonight. Design the home of your dreams with the flexibility to pay over time. Shop Jordan's Furniture now. Get up to 60 months with equal payments with no interest and for a limited time, no minimum. Right past him. Boy, that looks harder than 92, doesn't it? Mm. It's deceiving. Crowd up. Especially when a guy swings through it, it always looks faster. How about a punch out? Fans want to celebrate win number 87. Boy, it didn't start off very well in that first inning, but here we are now. Ground ball looks like it's going to have a very pretty ending, though. Nunez gets him, and the Red Sox win again. They take game one of this three game series against Tampa Bay. Final score tonight TC 7 to 3. Nice way to kick off the weekend.